Pain is a powerful motivator. And unfortunately, or fortunately for us, it drives a lot of patients into our practices. And these patients will typically present with infections around a tooth. They're in a lot of pain and they need that tooth removed. Well, we need to know how we do this comfortably for our patients because this can be a challenging situation as our anesthetics aren't always as effective in areas where there's some inflammation or infection going on. So the first thing we need to understand is why does this happen? Well, when there's infection, the body responds by vasodilating in the area to get lots of immune cells to come from the blood vessels and fight the infection and start to carry away some of the bad stuff that's forming in that area. Now, this also carries away our anesthetic prior to it being able to convert into its active form to start blocking the nerves in that area. The second reason that this happens is that the anesthetic, like I just mentioned, has to be converted inside the body into the active molecules that can blockade the nerve. So it comes in a water-soluble form when it's injected, the pH of the body is responsible for turning those inactive molecules into the active form. Now, our physiologic pH is about 7.4. This is very tightly regulated. Sometimes in areas of infection, in a localized infection, it can be around 6 in terms of the pH. So this pH is significantly lower, which means that it's going to take longer and you're going to get fewer molecules converted into the active form. So these are issues that we face when we're injecting anesthetic into these areas. How do we combat this? One of the ways that we do it is by using a larger volume of anesthetic. So if you would normally infiltrate once, you may infiltrate twice to begin with. So you can add more anesthetic to get more molecules that may eventually convert into a higher amount of anesthesia to blockade that region. The second way to do it might be through anesthetic buffering. Now, anesthetic buffering is a concept that's relatively new to dentistry. It's been around in the medical field for a long time. We're going to learn about it in another video. But essentially, the anesthetic is converted prior to injecting it. So you get a much higher concentration of active molecules initially as soon as you place the anesthetic. The other way that we can combat this is to use blocks instead of infiltrations. Now, blocks are very effective because what we're doing is we're taking the anesthetic and we're moving it to an area that has a more normal physiologic pH than the immediate vicinity of the infection. So let's say if we had an infected central incisor, the tissues were all swollen here, pus was visible coming from the gingival sulcus, this tooth needs to come out for that patient. Rather than infiltrating on the, pal on the palatal aspect and the facial aspect, we would do an ASA block and we would do an incisive foramen block or a nasal palatine nerve block. That is going to allow us to get the anesthetic farther from the infection site and allow the body to have a more normal pH in those regions to help convert it into the active form of that anesthetic. And we're going to be blockading more distal on those nerves to try to knock out any innervation that may be coming from other areas. So we're, we're increasing our chances of getting people numb by blocking versus infiltrating due to the chemical processes that go on in the body. The other thing that I could tell you is that if you face a molar tooth, typically upper molar teeth, what you'll find is if you have an infection in these teeth, you are going to block these and you'll find that you may still have some sensation on these teeth when they're coming out. What I do routinely with them is after I do the block, I'll do a PSA block and perhaps an infiltration if it's a first molar to supplement that. We will also do a PDL injection on the palatal root. Now the palatal root, remember, is typically angling towards the palate. There's a lot of infection going on in that area, preventing that anesthetic from even reaching that target site of the palatal root, let alone converting into its active form. So if you do a PDL injection as a supplemental injection prior to removing the tooth, you're going to have more comfortable patients as you're doing that extraction. The final thing to tell you would be that if you have a tooth anywhere in the mouth that is infected and you're maybe having troubles after your initial block, try doing PDL injections like I just mentioned on each of the line angles of the tooth. So you'll do it around all four sides of the tooth. You could think of it as a baseball thing like a grand slam technique. You're going to go around the base as you do every single corner. That will help to get good anesthesia around that tooth. Review the PDL injection in our other videos so that you know how to do it well. The final thing that I will mention, and I can say anecdotally this may happen, it may or may not be true, uh, the research isn't really clear on this, but when you inject into a site that is infected, are you spreading that infection? 
possibly. So if you're injecting large amounts of anesthetic into a region that seems to have a relatively controlled infection and that anesthetic happens to be kind of dissecting the tissue a little bit or spreading that tissue and carrying with it some more of the bacteria, you may end up getting more of an infection there. This would be maybe more of a concern in an immunocompromised patient. Now I've had this happen once or twice to me. Whether or not this would have happened regardless, it, it's hard to say. But something to maybe avoid and again maybe why we choose to inject in areas that don't have infection versus in the immediate vicinity of those teeth. This is up to you, you can read more on it, but you might want to stay clear of that. When you use a needle in an infected area, the final thing to say is you don't want to reuse that into a sterile site because you'll be tracking some of that infection from that area into somewhere that is sterile, potentially seeding new infection.